Hello, I'm uh, John Swan. I'm the director of the Kane Foundation Laboratories here at Texas Children's Hospital, and I'm also the co-director of the Neurological Research Institute and professor at Baylor College of Medicine. Here in the Kane Foundation Laboratories, we're really focused on what are called the, the intractable childhood epilepsy, epilepsies that we don't understand, and the epilepsies that where there's no therapy for us. Many people with epilepsy are, can be helped enormously by a wide variety of drugs available. But even with the new drugs, 30% of the children and of adults continue to have seizure after seizure, even when they're on different types of drugs at the same time. Years ago, there was a great need for research and for new therapies, and there still is today. Many of the children who have these repeated seizures that are not controlled become intellectually disabled. They can have cognitive problems, they can have problems in school. That leads to a really interesting set of experiments that we did and actually led to clinical trial. A tuber sclerosis complex is a disorder and where there are tumors are, are produced, and they're not malignant, but there are tumors that are produced in kidney and lungs, but also in the brain. They're a focus of seizure generation. Some of these children can have uh, this malformation in a particular area of the brain can be removed but during epilepsy surgery. And so we, in collaboration with the neurosurgeons and the neuropsychologist and, uh, and, the, and the neurologist, we collected some of the tissue that was removed in order to control the seizures. We uh, found one particular molecular pathway that was abnormal. It was called the mTOR pathway. We decided we could create an animal model that reproduces this condition and see if they actually had seizures. And we eliminated a gene that was important in this particular pathway, and the pathway became hyperactive, and the animals, these mice, had terrible epilepsy. Many, many seizures in a day, a prolonged seizure, just like the children did. There was a drug that actually suppressed activity in that pathway, a drug called rapamycin. So we said, if we give the drug, can we stop the seizures? And indeed, when we did that, every animal became seizure-free. What was beneficial about it was the drug and eventually Everolimus have been already used for other purposes in humans, or basically for types of uh, kidney cancer, and they also were really used as immunosuppressants. So that was a big hurdle that we were able to jump over very quickly because they were already FDA approved. Well, we got FDA approved to treat 20 children. The results were fantastic. Almost all the children had a reduction in seizure frequency and as many as four out of the 20 became seizure free. Those were really exciting uh, results. In the end, I think what is unique about the NRI, Kane Foundation Laboratories, Texas Children's Hospital, is the fact that we have this large basic science component to a child neurology program. Some of the scientists, the researchers in the NRI and, and, in, and in the Kane Foundation Laboratories are child neurologists, are physicians, who see patients on a, on a daily basis and can bring their experiences and their observations from the clinic to the laboratory and where the research scientists like myself and then apply that information to studying mechanisms, develop ways to, of treating those disorders. And there are multiple examples of those in NRI and really quite remarkable. Today, Kane Foundation investigators are studying several different types of intractable seizure disorders. These include infantile spasms, Angelman syndrome, and Oda-Hodder syndrome. If you're interested in helping us help children with these seizure disorders, please click the button at the bottom of the screen.